Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me. On this episode of Build Your Own, we're going to build, price, and option a 2020 Hyundai Velocitor N with a performance package, as well as learn about the features and other configurations. Before we do, however, I just want to remind you that if you find this build and price review helpful, informative, or entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. The 2020 Hyundai Velocitor N is a three-door hatchback that seats four people and comes in two configurations, standard package and performance package. The 2020 Hyundai Velocitor N in standard package trim, which starts at $27,400, comes with an upgraded turbocharged 2-liter engine that makes 250 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. It comes with a 6-speed manual transmission, in-specific suspension tuning with adaptive dampers, performance brakes, and front seats. If you move up to the optional performance package, which will set you back $29,000, $500, so it's a $2,100 upgrade. You enjoy the upgraded 275 horsepower engine with a limited slip differential. An electronically controlled suspension system also enhances the handling. Upgraded brakes are available. The Velocitor's ends fuel economy ratings come in at 22 miles to the gallon in the city, 29 miles to the gallon on the highway, and 25 miles to the gallon with mixed driving. The 2020 Hyundai Velocitor N comes with the latest version of Hyundai's infotainment suite and an updated touchscreen. The standard infotainment system includes an 8-inch touchscreen, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. Standard, car standard cargo tie-down hooks are new for this year. The 2020 Hyundai Velocitor N is a true performance bargain in its segment with a starting MSRP of $27,400 and should be carefully evaluated by shoppers who are interested in a sporty compact car. Okay, let's get into this build-in price review of the 2020 Hyundai Velocitor N. I love this car. I want to say I want to say that first and foremost. And first and foremost, we need to find out. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you do. What is an N? A lot of manufacturers have fast cars. For BMW, it's the M series. For uh, Mercedes, it's AMG. Uh, for the Audis, it's the RS series. For Hyundai, it's N. And they're telling us that's the first letter of Nam Yang. That's their location of their global R&D facility where their models are created. And it's also the first letter of the Nürburgring. The Nürburgring is a famous track in Germany uh, where cars will really... Uh, if you really want to prove your cars, uh, how awesome your car is, you need to go down to the Nürburgring and set down a fast lap. Hyundai has a facility at the Nürburgring, so that way they have built and developed this Hyundai Velocitor in right there at the Nürburgring. They also take this car racing. I'm very impressed with the Hyundai Velocitor in, as you can see. So here's the road going car, the 2020 Hyundai Velocitor N on the left, and here's their race car on the right hand side. There are a lot, uh, this Hyundai Velocitor N is in a really uh, hot segment, that, that hot hatchback segment where lots of cars like the Subaru WRX uh, compete, the Volkswagen Golf GTI, uh, the Mazda 3, the Honda Civic Type R, all these cars compete with this Hyundai Velocitor in. And you know what? I've done build and price reviews on all of them. I've actually put links in the description below. So make sure that you check out my other videos that compete with this 2020 Hyundai Velocitor, my other build and price reviews. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to find out about the features, the specific features of the Hyundai Velocitor N, and then we'll go and find out about the other features about the Hyundai Velocitor, like technology features, safety features, things like that. So right now, we're just going to learn about the specific Velocitor N features. They got this thing that's called in-grin mode, okay? This gives you drive modes through your touchscreen, like a normal mode, eco, sport, and a track focus mode. So they're going to get ready to tell us about these different features of the in-grin mode. So let's check that out. So they have it laid out in a couple, in two different categories. They have powertrain categories and chassis categories. So we've got uh, engine, rev matching, electronic limited slip, exhaust sound. And it looks like they've got a little video to play, but we're not going to play that. But they have a little snippet of information below each uh, video image. So as far as engine's concerned and how it relates to the in-grin mode, uh, they say the engine in normal mode has a balance of power and efficiency. If you switch to sport mode, then you have a quicker throttle response. And if you put it in sport plus, then you have the fastest throttle response and power output for this vehicle. 
Okay, and then there's rev matching. Okay, so when rev matching in normal mode, you got smooth, faster shifting. In sport, you got quick uh, uh, RPM control for sportier shifting. And sport plus gives you your most aggressive early downshift to keep your revs high. So if you really want to get sporty, this vehicle is right there with you. I like how Hyundai is taking the time to show you how each one of their performance components, and this time the, limit, the electronic limited slip differential, how they behave and change when you do the in-grin mode setting. So electronic limited slip, you got your normal mode, it reduces understeer and boosts cornering stability. In sport mode, it enhances driving dynamics. And when you got it in your full out uh, sport plus mode, that gives you your ultimate gripping performance and cornering speed. Then we have, how does the in-grin mode work with the exhaust sound? Well, in normal mode, you get a spirited yet considerate exhaust level. Uh, when you put it in sport mode, you get a more aggressive sound. And then in sport mode, if, if this thing has valves, like a lot of these performance uh, exhaust system has valves to control how loud or quiet the exhaust is. If this thing has valves, then in, in sport plus mode, it belts out uh, an energizing pops and crackle. So... Uh, all uh, what you call it, or uh, whatever, this thing, they, they let out all the full exhaust sound with the Sport Plus mode. Okay, now we're going to talk about the chassis and how it performs in the in-grin mode. There's just the suspension and two other things, and then we'll go move on to a couple other things. Uh, for the suspension, in normal mode, you get a comfort mode for everyday driving, so you probably have a pliant, supple suspension, or as supple as this performance suspension is going to be. Uh, and then in sport mode, you got increased dampening to provide sportier handling. To me, that means stiffer. Uh, and then in Sport Plus, that means maximum stiffness for the most aggressive cornering, and the body's not going to do any roll, and it's going to be hooking up tight. That's what that kind of tells me. As far as the in-grin mode and how the steering is performed, uh, in normal mode, you've got a light steering wheel feel. In Sport mode, there's a little more resistance to the steering wheel, which it, so I guess they say it feels weighted. And that probably feels good. And then in Sport Plus, I haven't I haven't tried a car that you can change how stiff the steering wheel feels, but that sounds exciting to me. Uh, in Sport Plus mode, uh, you get the highest level of tightness that's at home on the racetrack. So you get a nice, stiff steering wheel feel. I'd probably have to drive around in Sport Plus mode, or at least Sport, most of the time. Okay, last but not least on the different settings and how in-grin mode perf uh, affects the different performance uh, characteristics of this car. I guess ECS stands for Electronic Cornering Stability. They don't say. At any rate, uh, in normal mode, you get greater traction control, which would lend itself to what I just said. Uh, in sport mode, it improves performance by allowing some un oversteer. Uh, and then in sport plus mode, that's where the back end kind of slides out. That's what oversteer is, when the back end slides out a little bit. Understeer is when, the, when you're turning a corner and the front end is... You're turning, but the front end is kind of pushing, pushing straight. Uh, in sport plus mode, you get reduced setting uh, for more aggressive driving. That means you can probably, you can probably swing that back end out a little bit more. Right, it's 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 taking some of the uh, some of your safety away and letting you have a little more control of the car is what it sounds like. Okay, so the 2020 Hyundai Velocitor N has been born on the Nurburgring track. Like I said, Hyundai has a facility there, and you best believe that's where they took this car to tune it and get it all dialed in. So they they're going to tell us about the handling. Let's learn about the handling of our 2020 Hyundai Velocitor N. Okay, so that ECS actually stood for Electronically Controlled Suspension. All right, we just kind of learned about how the Electronically Controlled Suspension is affected by the in-grin uh, mode. We did just learn that, but just to learn a little bit more about what ECS is, it's a multi-mode Electronically Controlled Suspension that continuously adjusts its damping force according to road conditions and all that there to give you optimum handling, stability, and and control. I love the way the Hyundai Veloster N looks, and I like it in Performance Blue. I like it in white, but I really like it in Performance Blue as well. Looks like our 2020 Veloster N comes with Pirelli P0, oh, I'm sorry, they're available, optional uh, Pirelli P0 summer tires, 235, 35, 19s. Uh, these summer tires were developed specifically for the Veloster N, all right, and they're wrapped in some light, uh, machine, lightweight, uh, machine finished light alloy uh, wheels. There you go. Uh, that's going to give us the optimum grip, lateral stability, and stopping power. Thing is, if you get these Pirelli P0 summer tires, you're going to have to get yourself a set of winter tires too because these things are not going to hook up in the winter. 
Okay, so there are some high-performance brakes for the 2020 Hyundai Velocirin that's standard, okay, and they get bold red calipers. But you can actually get these available brakes that are even bigger, 13.6-inch rotors up front and 12.4-inch rotors in the back, in the back uh, so you have better braking. We are probably going to option that. We are already gonna get, we're already going to get the performance package. And that's just under thirty thousand dollars. We're gonna go ahead and take the bite, get those uh, the performance brakes as well, and get it all. We're gonna get it all so we can uh, so this car can compete with the Honda Civic Type R's and the Ford Focus RS's and the Volkswagen Golfs and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, I've been putting up links as we've gone along to some of these videos. But if you want to get access to all the videos that this car competes against that I've done the building price reviews on, they're down in the description below. Okay, there's this in-corner carving differential uh, developed specifically for the in, and it's an available limited slip differential. Remember, we know it's available because on the standard trim uh, in, it's not available. When you get the performance package, it comes with this differential, all right? So just note that. Performance package comes with this limited slip uh, differential that offers electronic control and uses torque vectoring to intelligent, intelligently and precisely dist distribute torque where it's needed most. Uh, so what that means is this thing can control wheel spin, usually on like an inside wheel going around, an inside back wheel going around a curve to help keep the car. Maybe the car was going to get loose and shaky and start swerving. And stuff like this limited slip differential and torque vectoring can help save your butt, basically, is what, what it all comes down to. Okay, so we learned about all that suspension stuff and all of that. Let's move on and learn about the powertrain. Well, we know that there is a 275 horsepower turbocharged engine, makes 260 horsepower. It actually makes the same amount of torque as the 250 horsepower version. Obviously, they're talking about this 275 horsepower engine. That's the one that comes with the performance package. You get an extra, uh, what, 25 horsepower, but you got the same pound feet of torque. You got the six speed manual transmission that's standard uh, with automatic rev matching. So makes it makes the uh, makes the engine perform better and makes you look better. Yeah, that exhaust system does have valves in it. So there's a variable exhaust valve system as well. It's got three levels of performance. There's that normal pulse pounding to crackling invigoration. So it can get loud is what they're telling you. Or their version of loud as far as what's what what can be done from a manufacturer, right? You can buy an aftermarket exhaust system it will surely be louder than this. But it's going to have a nice factory uh, performance sound. All right, so we, 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 we learned about the handling. We learned about the engine. Let's take a look at the design, the specific stuff for our Hyundai Veloster N. Now here they're showing the standard package, and we can see the color palette. If we come over here to performance package, seems like the colors are the same. So whether you get a standard package Hyundai Velocitor in for 2020 or one with the performance package, like we're going to build in price, they only come in four colors. You've got the uh, chalk white, which is what I like the chalk white a lot. You've got the performance blue. You've got the racing red, which actually isn't too bad. And then you have the phantom black. Uh, let's take a look at this 360 degree walk around that we can do of our uh, Hyundai Velocitor in. All right, so we can get a virtual uh, exterior walk around. Oh, did you take note of how the third brake light is up here under the uh, spoiler, under the roof spoiler? The third brake light is a triangle. I like that. Uh, yeah, I think we didn't. We already started spinning that way. All right, cool. So that's the exterior. Let's take a look at the interior. Okay, here's our interior for the uh, 2020 Hyundai Velocitor N, and I'm assuming it's whether it's the regular version or the, or the performance version, they're not changing the interior of this thing. Uh, it looks pretty good in here. You've got the cloth seats, but the cloth seats have a nice shape to them. They're heavily bolstered. They say in on them right there. They've got some contrast stitching. Uh, they've got that performance blue contrast stitching, really, and performance blue seat belts. You've got, this is really a true four-seater, this car, because it's got this center cubby with a cup holder and a storage bin in there, so you're not going to get five people in this car. Uh, is there a sunroof? Don't see a roof there. That's fine. I don't need a glass roof. I hardly ever use those things anyway. Uh, very nice-looking car in here. Nothing wrong with it. It's got your little chrome aluminum pedals there, or faux chrome. I don't know if they're real or not, but they look cool. 
Moving on, there's in badging. So we saw that, obviously, if you get it in, just like if you get any other kind of performance car from another manufacturer, they got to put their badges on it. I mean, that's what it's all about. You're paying for that badge. You are paying for that badge. So they're letting you know that this logo appears throughout the Velocitor <clears throat> from the cascading grill, which we can see here, to the shift knob as a signature to our new high-performance brand. I really like this car. They keep going on and on about this exhaust, don't they? Now, not only are they telling us that it, you know, it had that variable valve exhaust system, but they got big openings, right? It's got big exhaust tips. Dual large bore outlets increase exhaust flow and release that signature snap, crackle, and pop sound. What is this, Rice Krispies? Here's that contrast stitching I was talking about. Uh, so, yeah, the Performance Blue contrast uh, stitching and seat belts. I guess that's standard no matter what. Uh, as far as the steering wheel, you got perforated leather wrap steering wheel, and you got your uh, this little checkered flag here. That's how you get to your in mode, that in grin mode or whatever. So you can do all that all that cool stuff that we just covered. Uh, and the rear wing, the rear wing is sweet. Love the. It says it's got the two stage rear wing with integrated triangle brake light, enhances aerodynamics along with the wide stance and low center of gravity. Uh, this boosts handling performance too. Oh yeah, it is a two stage because I see a wing here and there's another wing that's really a roof spoiler right over the t another one right over the top of the window. So yeah, I didn't even catch that design. Really cool. Okay, awards and accolades. So yeah, this Honda Velocitor in is kicking butt and taking names or something like that. Uh, let's see. It, uh, see Motor Week. Uh, gave the Velocitor in Driver's Choice Award for the Best Sport Coupe in 2019. And Kelly Blue Book uh, gave it the Best Buy of the Year among performance cars uh, for last year. So, pretty cool. And it just came out last year, if you didn't know. Honda Velocitor in just came out last year. So, as soon as it came out, it was already a winner. All right, let's check a few specs. Features and specs. So, pricing and packages. Right, we know the standard package with the 250 horsepower engine and no limited slip differential, 27,400. The performance package like we're doing, that's $29,500. We already know the fuel economy, right? 22 miles to the gallon in the city, 29 miles to the gallon on the highway, 25 miles to the gallon with mixed driving. Uh, as far as engines are concerned, well, we know the deal. Uh, the standard engine makes 250 horsepower, and uh, the uh, optional engine makes 275 horsepower. Both engines make 260 pound-feet of torque with the, uh, from 1450 RPMs to 4000 RPM. All right, that's the deal. Um, body suspension, we're not going to get deep into that. Interior, exterior dimensions, all right, this vehicle's not very long. It's 167.9 inches long. It's got a 104.3-inch wheelbase. It's got it's 71.3 inches wide, and it's um well I get it's got a standard and optional height. So at its lowest, it's 54.9 inches uh, tall, and or 55.1 inches tall. So I don't know what really changes that. Maybe the performance tires, because I don't think there's a different suspension. Moving on to the interior, uh, we got front headroom is 38.1 inches. The rear headroom is 35.9. That's not too bad. Leg room in the front, 42.6. Leg room in the back, 34.1. Shoulder room. See, and here's the thing. we got to talk about these things because here's the deal. Yep, the Hyundai Velocitor uh, in is a performance car, but you got to live with it every day. So you need to know things like what are the specs. We also need to know things like what safety features it comes with and what technology features it comes with. So after we check these specs, we're going to go jump over and just learn about the other regular stuff like safety features and things like that and learn about the infotainment system and then after we do that then we'll jump back and do our build and price review so shoulder room uh 56 inches in the front 54 inches in the back uh hip room 54 up front which is about the size of a bmw x1 and hip room in the back 46.1 uh then you got your interior volumes here your cargo volume with the rear seats down is 44.5 uh cubic feet so that's pretty good storage Okay, like I said, we were going to learn about some regular features of our 2020 Hyundai Veloster in, such as the fact that it has a three-door design. Uh, so that third door, as we can see, that's over here on the passenger side, 
Uh, it's got that, they call it asymmetrical design. Uh, they call it the epitome of form and function. So, you know, you got to, you really have a two, you really have a coupe still, but you still have one third door. So it makes it easy for your backseat passengers or throwing stuff and cargo and packages and whatever you got there. So that's a cool design feature of the Velocitor N. Here's a nice shot of the hatchback design, right? Lots makes it real easy to throw all your stuff back there. We can see that one of the back seats is folded down, so surely it's going to have a 60-40 split seat back or 50-50 uh, split seat back. Uh, they say there's available LED tail lights. I'd probably like to think that. Uh, and remember now that we're over here on the regular side of the Velocitor stuff, so those available LED tail lights are probably standard on our N model. All right, so let's talk about technology. Here's that 8-inch touchscreen that uh, that our Veloster N comes with. So it's got the premium multifunction display. It includes the rear-view monitor. Uh, it's got an 8-speaker Infinity premium audio system, and it also has a subwoofer. There's standard uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I love that. There's available wireless phone charging. Don't know if that's standard with our Veloster N, but if it's not... And we can get it in the accessories or something. I'll probably just throw that in there. I'm sure it's not very expensive. But I think going forward, uh, I know my current phone is not wireless device charging. But I know at some point I will have one. So I'd love for the car to be ready for that. There's this also, there's this Blue Link connected car service. They don't say whether, it, uh, whether or not this is standard or not. But they give you three free years of this. Uh, well, I guess so. Maybe it's not standard, but they're giving it to you for now. Uh, and then you have to pay for it. But it gives you three free years of remote start with climate control, remote door unlock, destination service powered by Google, and more. That's kind of cool. Like I said, we're over on the regular side so we can learn about the other regular features. Because obviously, when they're talking about their N, all they really want to tell you about is performance features. But we need to learn about the other things. We know that the N has that leather wrap steering wheel. But here's what's cool. There's a head-up display. They didn't even mention that, obviously, on the performance page for the in, but there's an available pop-up head-up display. Uh, if we can get that, then we are definitely getting that because, well, I love head-up displays, and I love digital speedometers, and if we can get that, we are certainly going to get that. Don't know if it's an option or not, but we're all over it if it is. They say that the interior has an asymmetrical design. Uh, unconventional striking theme continues under the sheet metal with a driver-focused center stack. Now, they didn't show it in any of our photos, but apparently there is an available sunroof. Now, is that sunroof available in our N model? I don't know. Maybe they don't want to put a sunroof in the N model because of structural rigidity. I don't know. But it is an option for the Velocitor as a blanket statement. Don't know if we can put it on our N. And even if we can, I probably won't option it because I'm not really a sunroof guy. But I just want to uh, you know, let you know about these features because I told you we're going to learn about the other features and configurations along the way. And this is along the way. Okay, here it is. Let's find out about this Hyundai SmartSense. All right. This is their suite of advanced safety features. So they've got what? They've got four collision avoidance. Now, they don't tell us... Uh, that whether or not this is standard stuff, they tell us that it's available on the Turbo Ultimate, but they don't say anything about the N. So we'll have to check all that. But I just want to go over uh, what some of their standard, what some of their safety features are, just in general. There's driver attention warning. There's a blind spot warning. There's lane keep assist. There's smart cruise control with stop and go. There's rear cross traffic collision warning. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for uh, their safety stuff. Let's move on. Okay, let's check this real fast, and then we'll do our build and price. These are our safety specs for our Hyundai Velocitor N. We've got the driver blind spot mirror. We've got energy absorbing steering column, front and rear crumple zones. Um, we got the latch system. I don't see a whole bunch of that standard safety driver stuff. Advanced dual curtain airbags, child safety locks. Uh, tire pressure monitor. No, so I don't see, I do not see all that standard safety equipment or that, that cool safety equipment we were just looking at. So it seems like we might have to option that. So with that said, let's just jump into our build now. Okay, so here we are. We're going to build and price our 2020 Hyundai Velocitor in. I told you that I like the performance blue, but I also like the chalk white. I also like the chalk white. And here's the thing. I can imagine buying the Performance Blue and thinking, because it is kind of a, 
Uh, you know, it's kind of, it's not a really a standard color. Might have a hard time reselling that. I could imagine buying the performance blue and thinking one day, you know, I wish I would have got the chalk white. But I can't sit up and think to myself, man, I wish I would have got the uh, performance blue. So I think based on that, we're going to go with the chalk white. All right, we're going to go with the chalk white. Uh, as far as transmissions, there's only one transmission. That's six-speed manual. We're going to add our performance package. All right, we're going to add our performance package. That gives us uh, the bigger brakes. That, that does automatically give us the, those bigger uh, brakes. It gives us the variable valve exhaust. It gives us the 19-inch wheels. It gives us a 275 horsepower engine. gives us the limited slip differential. We get quite a bit uh, for the $2,100 that they are charging for the uh, performance package. Okay, so we got the performance package. Uh, what else is there? There's just added accessories. And the thing is... Um, all I really care for really is the, how about the wheel locks? Um, and I don't see anything about that safety equipment. So I don't know if I missed that, but we looked and I didn't see it. Let's just hope that it's bundled in there because they're sending us to the finished bill thing. We're already on our way to the summary here. All right. Well, here we are at the summary. We've built and priced our 2020 Hyundai Veloster in with a performance package. We put everything on there that we wanted. We came out just over $30,000. What an awesome car. I didn't see whether or not we got that safety equipment in there. Maybe let's, I don't know. At any rate, uh, a wonderful car. Love this car. Out the door, $30,000. This is a lot of car for the money. I am in love with this car for sure. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you found this review of the 2020 Honda Veloster in with a performance package uh, helpful, informative, or entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And also, don't forget, check the description below. I've put uh, my related build and price reviews to 10, 10 vehicles that I've done build and price reviews on that compete with this Veloster in. All right. Other than that, I'm going to tell you, have a nice day, and I'll see you on the very next